Hello everyone, my name is Mara Sancho. I'm a Portuguese chemical researcher with 20 years of experience in scientific research, science and technology management, and science entrepreneurship. I spend my free time with music. Thank you so much uh, for inviting me to be here. It's an honor to be invited to talk about this kind of new category of diamonds, Lego diamonds using CO2. Um, as I was saying, um, this is a uh, kind of a new kind of um, category of diamonds, liquid diamonds using CO2. I'd like to start this presentation of my entrepreneurial journal, journey in diamond industry, saying that as a chemical researcher, I always had an attraction for the amazing behavior of carbon. And uh, what drives me in this research is interest in this chemical element in all of its soluble structures, because nowadays carbon is considered an enemy, but uh, it, may be, it may be waiting um, for the right perspective to become an economy of revolution, as it may represent a billions of dollars opportunity in diamond industry can be just a starting point. So four years ago, um, the scientific community context was the knowledge that the earth is becoming a clock bomb with uh, its explosive charge, CO2, accumulating in the ocean due to its excess in atmosphere. I made a trip to New York. My hotel was near Diamond District, and I used to pass through it every day. And every day, someone at the doors of the stores used to ask me if I sell diamonds and used to try to negotiate with me. I thought it was uh, a hilarious uh, situation because it looks like I have a diamond seller face, uh, but I was not a seller at the time. At, and in the last night, I recorded the exact moment at which I had the idea to produce diamonds using CO2 uh, in my last return to the hotel as a starting point of this project. I have never seen no one doing it, but diamonds are made of pure carbon. There's a lot of CO2 in the atmosphere, and CO2 has carbon. So what if the air is a diamond mine? Um, I had a, a presentation of some of the largest diamond mines in the world uh, with big goals, the danger they can represent for the workers, the environment impact around it, and the conflicts that frequently happen related to diamonds. Nowadays, even with Russia being one of the biggest producers with the uh, uh, four uh, of these um, largest mines in the top of the largest mines in the world, and all of the restrictions due to the war in the Ukraine. And in Diamond District, it looks like they were saying that nothing of this is enough. Since then, I decided to find a way to make it possible in three steps. CO2 capture, solid carbon separation, and transformation of solid carbon using HPHT method. This part is something that science can do since 1950s, and uh, most recently with gem quality, and uh, with the world record of diamond size, which can correspond to a bigger capture and also bigger profit, because the diamond size also influences their price. We could also try to do it using CBD process, but it would require more steps and resources uh, to do it, as we would need to transform the CO2 in CH4 and also use H2 in the reactors. So I prefer to focus in HPHT method. Uh, the first step, how to capture CO2. When I started my research, I only saw Climeworks already capturing CO2 from the air. They were in the greenhouses phase yet using their technology near greenhouses to enhance the growth of plants. I contacted them asking if they could sell me a lab version of their technology as I not need a lot of capture because diamonds are still little pieces, even the bigger ones, uh, comparing with the capture they already could provide at the time. But they told me they could not sell me a lab version of the technology. So I researched it. I research it further because if I have to buy CO2 far from where I can produce and sell diamonds, I would emit more in transportation than I would capture. Uh, so I read about a lot of studies related to CO2 capture, their achievements and their challenge, and all of them ended in one of these situations. Not easy to replicate, rare elements use it, not scalable. So I had another idea. 
What if only change the state of matter of CO2? We could do it refrigerating air below minus 78.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, at this temperature, CO2 can solidify and uh, we could already capture nitrogen from air, for example. And the temperature needed is far below the one needed to capture CO2. Then uh, I saw the only process using cryogenic capture actually uses um, liquid nitrogen in their process. And this is in UK, for example, um, to get into the needed temperature. It looks a no sense process, but then I found they used liquid nitrogen from industrial, industrial waste. But this is a very limited option in that case. I researched further in terms of refrigeration technologies, and uh, I found a type of technology called thermoacoustic refrigeration. It only uses sound waves to pressure a working fluid inside uh, to create uh, heated and cooled zones due to pressure difference while the sound wave is propagated. Um, we can find at least one option in the market uh, reaching far below the needed temperature. Uh, and there's also a project in Japan, another in China, I think. Uh, they've proven it can be done in a low cost way to reach uh, at least minus uh, 107 degrees Celsius. Um, and uh, in the presentation, you could see they, they solidify uh, something near uh, the technology in these uh, temperatures. Uh, but uh, these uh, technologies were not designed to capture this CO2 that they form. And uh, the idea of CO2 diamonds uh, is to develop this type of technology to uh, collect this CO2 that can be uh, solidified, solidified with this process. Uh, so that the part of CO2 capture, uh, how to separate carbon from CO2. Once again, uh, the scientific literature stated all the challenges related to this usual endothermic process, the lot of energy needed, the behavior of CO2 when the source of energy were lasers, for example, and also the rare materials needed, uh, too much complicated all of this. In this point, I had the idea to observe the plants because they do it naturally. They capture CO2 and uh, they separate carbon to use it in the sugars that feed the plant. How actually they can do this? Well, um, they use a molecule called the Rubisco. Uh, it, it is the responsible to do this job in the plants. And I, re I researched the exact part where it do it. And I found an easier way to do this separation using an abundant and non-toxic element. The reaction of this element with CO2 can separate solid carbon. And if you analyze it, it's in the form of few layers graphene and graphite. So the idea would be to use this graphite in a HPHT reactor powered by green energy to produce lab diamonds using CO2 with their emissions. Now I have a complete idea how to make it real. I start sharing it uh, to gain traction and uh, enhance my network first in scientific community, and then in entrepreneurial challenge. I presented first uh, in um, my university, the place where I studied uh, in Lisbon. Um, and um, I also published this presentation. And last year, I started to participate in Climate Launchpad. I was a national finalist. I was invited to participate in a, a program in Canada, Carleton University cross-border for local value program. It was a three-month program um, with the objective to enhance the business plans to get uh, 1 billion in five years, uh, the stated unicorn uh, road, I can say that. Um, and um, they do this because they, they used um, a study that they made with uh, artificial intelligence over companies that reach this state. And uh, they found some patterns and they asked us to use these patterns in our business plan. In the end, there was a competition. I was a, a finalist and the winner of this competition. During this competition, I found my team. I was alone till there. 
Uh, my team is uh, from around the world because this was a, a global competition. Um, we have a lot of different expertise. Um, they helped me to enhance my network uh, in this competition. After this, I also participated in one year in Portugal, Nova University, uh, Best Business Idea Award uh, last year. We also uh, were one of the winners of this competition. And I'm now incubated in Nova University here in Lisbon because of this award. And um, uh, right now, I'm participating uh, in Nightweight Challenge. It's a competition between uh, Portuguese speaking countries and China. The idea is to create partnerships uh, with China. Uh, China is one of the bigger producers of Lepro Diamonds. They produce 50% uh, uh, of Lepro Diamonds. Um, and uh, with this project, I'm trying to get the partnership there to this part of the production and maybe investment um, in a later phase. And uh, I'm a finalist, final would be next Saturday. And I'm also in another competition here in Portugal from um, Entrepreneurial Portuguese uh, Association. This is lasting all of this year. It will last till next year, June. And uh, I already know I'm a finalist of this competition. I'm now waiting for uh, other groups uh, that are participating to find uh, the finalists of these groups and uh, will compete in June. Um, <clears throat> so it was an honor to receive also this invitation from International Institute of Geology uh, to present this uh, process and to do this virtual lecture and to give assistance in a new course and book related with this topic, uh, as uh, what was told to me. Uh, to make a real impact, this process and technology must be full developed and use it as much as possible. I need investment to buy reactors or partnerships to make it easier at this point, because it's a theoretical process with scientific proof of concept in all of the steps. But I didn't create the first time with this process because I'm doing this as an independent researcher and the machines are not cheap. Uh, there's no potential partners here in Portugal because there are no producers here yet. And even with potential interest of Cartier or Samsung, for example, they, they required uh, meetings uh, to talk about this. You need to see the first one created with the process to, to get to further investment in, in after the, this, this step. Uh, we know there's an increase in demand because even customers are demonstrating environment conscience. Um, but with further development, jewelry could not be the only possible impact as labor can also be used in other segments like electronics and energy. Uh, for example, there's a company making diamond batteries and they say it could last for thousands of years. So I think the best way to impact is to share knowledge and uh, find partnerships. And that's why I really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you very much. And uh, sorry, uh, my computer, computer is blocked, I think. I can now uh, maybe hear your questions, but I'm not sure about it. Uh, Mrs. Santos? Yes. Uh, uh, hi, thank you so much for speaking with us and telling us about your research. It's quite fascinating. Um, I, was, I was wondering how uh, using CO2 is different from using methane uh, that I suppose people use for the CBD process. Yes, uh, methane can be achieved uh, from CO2 with a methylation process. This process needs solvents, needs energy, um, and uh, there are competitors in the market doing it with the methane, with CVD process. But right. um, when I started the research, I didn't know the competitors and I, I didn't know their ideas. Uh, I decided by myself that um, uh, HPHT would be better because um, comparing the process, um, I think I need less resources and less steps uh, to get into the diamonds. So, and, and also the, 
the fact that the HPHD can produce the bigger diamonds and they are the most available and they can get the bigger captor. Um, that's why I decided to, to use um, HPHD, but it's also possible to use the CVD. Uh, we have to start with the transformation of CO2 in CH1. Okay, okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Hello, ma'am. Oh. What is the standard size for gem quality diamond? What is gem quality diamonds? Uh, well, there are, uh, uh, we can say, an evaluation of the diamonds, and we can uh, put them in uh, four types. And um, when I refer gem quality, I refer to the two way. Uh, I think it's the most available, colorless, and all of that. Uh, we can also produce uh, colored diamonds, and they would not be two way type. But um, gem quality are mostly. Um, the ones that are in this um, in this uh, categorization, I think we can call that. It's something that is uh, an universal pattern. Uh, so, um, in the beginning, HPHC was used just for industrial use, but uh, nowadays uh, there are uh, new type of equipment, um, and uh, we can. Uh, already achieved gem quality with this uh, uh, new uh, equipment. Um, and that's it. I don't know if I answered your question. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, Ms. Santos, I have one more question. Yeah. I was wondering what you think the pricing structure for these diamonds would be compared to natural diamonds? Okay, uh, this market already exists. So um, customers already can buy lab gold diamonds in jewelry uh, mm -hmm. and even made from CO2 because as I said, there are already competitors in the market using CVD process. Um, the normal lab gold diamonds has a price three, uh, 30 to 40% uh, reduced compared to the, the natural diamonds. Uh, but I think uh, in case of the competitors in the CVD process, they are considering um, the diamonds from CO2 as premium diamonds. So comparing to level diamonds, they are uh, maybe um, not so reduced, um, but uh, they are still uh, reduced compared to natural diamonds. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, what are the possible inclusions? The inclusion, the possible inclusion. Yeah, possible inclusions. Ah, okay. Um, normally, lab gold diamonds has less inclusions because um, the inclusions is part of the, the process of natural diamonds when they they try they they reach the the the, the earth uh, outside the place where they they were formed. They they will um, get these inclusions in the way to the to the, the superficie, um, and uh, normally um, lab gold diamonds doesn't need this process. They can have inclusions because uh, um, HPHT they use catalysts, and um, these catalysts can uh, can uh, can be um, also in the final product sometimes but uh, this can be controlled, more controlled. So uh, maybe nitrogen, maybe uh, some HPHT diamonds can appear with a yellow color, but uh, this can change with the, the, the enhance of the technology. So nowadays we can produce it without this, but uh, maybe this uh, would be the, the most no perfect um, state of the HPHD diamonds. Did I answer the question? Uh, yes, ma'am. Can I ask one question, please? Yes. Uh, ma'am, yeah, these kind of diamonds comes in which type, like 1B or type 2B, if we are checking it yes. using a yes. spectroscopy? Yes. So which category this one will come? 
uh, this one that I'm trying to create would be yes. type to A. Would be type to A because why type to A? Because as I said, they are the most valuable, colorless, so no defects. Um, and uh, why I'm trying to create this one because I have uh, a partner that has requirements, a partner for cut polish certification in sales. And uh, he has require, uh, requirements in terms of size. They, they want uh, bigger diamonds, more than three carats after cut and polish. And in terms of quality, you want to uh, type to A. So I have to improve this uh, process till this point because that's the way I have to go into the market with this sales partner. But this can be perfect. Uh, machines use a type of uh, recycle, the, the catalyst and, and so on. This can be perfect. Um, and um, to perfect this, we need uh, someone with experience in HPHD that can, uh, can bring this type of expertise uh, to this uh, perfection of the recycle that we use uh, to achieve this, uh, this type 2A diamonds. Uh, is there any standard methods which we can use, like using a cross polarized filters or something like that to interpret the interference pattern using a microscope? Or should we need the advanced uh, spectroscopical method like Raman spectroscopy or UVVS and AR? That kind of things are needed. Is there any basic tools that we can use to identify your stones? Like I said, I didn't produce the first one yet. This is a theoretical process uh, that is proven um, in the basic uh, concepts that we're using. Um, so I can't answer this question because I don't have here the first time to show uh, what the technology can differentiate it uh, from the others. But uh, as long as the the machinery uh, is getting better. It's most difficult to to to, do, to see the difference. And uh, as we use more advanced technology uh, to produce, we also need more advanced technology to recognize that uh, they were produced in labs and in this specific way. Okay, I'm okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, Ma'am, can I ask one more thing, please? Yes. Uh, normally, this HPHD synthetic diamonds have a phenomena called phosphorescence, that after glowing of fluorescence, right? So this kind of diamonds also shows that phenomena, phosphorescence. I think uh, I can't answer this one because I I don't uh, think I can uh, know more about this question than you. So it's better to to don't answer this one, and uh, maybe in a later phase I can answer this one. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. 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 Ma'am, there are uh, two, three questions in the chat box. I can see the chat also. My computer is blocked. The only thing I, I can see is um, uh, the, four, uh, the four cameras that uh, were uh, with the presentation. And I can hear you. But, I, I'll uh, read it out for you, ma'am. OK. Uh, so one of our student is asking, is there any difference in hardness and also what about the prices different differentiation how do you do that and the price differentiation and the hardness uh, the hardness compared with natural diamonds maybe um, i don't know the knowledge they have but um, uh, natural diamonds and the lab grown diamonds are chemically uh, equal. So they are a structure of carbon um, and they are chemically equal. So the hardness would be the same in principle. Um, 
in uh, relation with the other question was about uh, the price. The price I already answered one of, about prices. The prices depends uh, in four C's normally. Uh, the color, the cut, the size, um, the cut and the clarity. I think that the four C's. Um, and uh, it's a conjugation of these four C's that can give a price of a diamond. And in generally, um, the price of um, Lego diamonds are 30 to 40% less than the, the price of natural diamonds. What is made is um, you can buy a bigger diamond with the same uh, money that would buy a natural diamond. So if the size matters, <laughs> Uh, with the same money, we can get bigger diamonds uh, if they are lab grown. I don't know if this is enough. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, madam, I have a question. Yes. Yeah, for uh, farming natural diamonds, it is required a temperature 900 to 1300 degrees Celsius and uh, 45 to 60 kilobar plus. For, the, for this artificial diamond, what is the temperature and pressure is required? This is also that uh, this is also something that can be perfect uh, with the site. So it's something that I can't uh, answer right now. Um, but um, we can say in terms of energy that we need this type of machines uh need the uh, 10 kilowatt hour uh, to 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 realize their function and um, they need uh, normally two to four weeks um, to produce the diamonds more uh, bigger diamonds need more time um, and this would be the energy needed in terms of the temperature and the pressure it depends on their side so this is something that must be uh, perfect uh, when we, we start to, to research in the, in, the kit, in the equipment. Ma'am, I have shared the presentation on the screen. Okay. Ma'am, you can see the presentation? Yes, I can see it. But yes. uh, we're now in second slide. We are using the PDF file. Okay. So this was to uh, to be so when I was talking. Uh, we can test them all, and if they have any question in any of them, I can answer. Here were the, the, dim the diamond mines. This is the, the state of some of the largest diamond mines in the world. Four of them are in Russia. And this is not a beautiful image to see, but that's a true of natural diamonds. In this one, we can see HPHT machines. Uh, this is a facility in China. Um, and these are the main characteristics of HPHT. And in the next one, uh, this is a CBD facility in India. Um, I found an image from India and I decided to use it here. They are different, the, the, the reactors. One uses solid phase, another, the other one uses uh, gas phase, they transform the gas in plasma. <clears throat> so more steps and uh, more resources to, to do it, I think. And that's why I started to use, uh, or to intend to use the HPHT method. Here was, um, the first modular, uh, the first model of the 
the Climeworks technology to be uh, to the to the capital that we need to produce diamonds. In the year, uh, is a, a process from UK. Uh, they use cryogenic carbon capture, but uh, they used to do it um, from uh, gas stream, rich gas stream from industrial waste. Uh, it's uh, another disadvantage, I think, because um, uh, it needs to be associated also uh, always with another process and my intention is to create a technology that can be used anywhere where we have the facility to produce we can have the, the machines to capture the co2 because if you need to to travel with the co2 from one place to another you will emit more co2 in the transportation i think the, i think the best idea is to have facilities near markets and do the capture there um, the other slide is the, um, one of the most advanced technologies that is in Japan. Uh, uh, it is the thermal acoustic refrigeration that reaches minus 107 degrees Celsius. And you can see here the solidification uh, in this part of the, of the technology, but they don't, they don't collect it. So my idea is to collect here and then use the this dry ice as we call it co2 in solid state uh, dry ice in a further step here is the ruby school uh, molecule the one in plants that are responsible for the separation of solid carbon from co2 and they do it with a specific uh, elements and if you use this element in our dry ice we will spray it uh, solid carbon and uh, uh, analyzing this solid carbon it is in form of few layers graphene and graphite and uh, here was my presentations uh, share, sharing the idea first in the university in the scientific meeting and after the awards that uh, i won in these two competitions and now the, the final of the Chinese competition uh, next Saturday in um, New Trade Center Macau. And also uh, the other competition here in Portugal, uh, final in June. I already selected for this one. And I will have uh, access to consultants still there to, to improve uh, the, the part of the business plan with the challenge in China. I'm trying to improve the part of the process because I'm trying to get the partnerships uh, to produce. And uh, this was my final slide, uh, the IIG uh, and CO2 Diamonds. Um, thank you very much for this opportunity. Sorry for this uh, uh, blocked computer, uh, but I think now you have a better idea about it. Uh, thank you, Mara, for this guest lecture. Thank you, uh, it was an honor to welcome you having this uh, guest lecture. Thank and you. yes, sorry. And sorry we for look this. forward again to discuss more. Okay, okay. Thank you very much.